In this video, I'm gonna share with you 15 ways why most kids in Foursquare, including me, find it hard to trust other people. I'm not saying it's on every chart, but at least 15 uh, points that I know why some kids do not trust. So I'm gonna start with number one, transitional nature of Foursquare. Transitional nature, meaning most of our kids move from home to home and most time it's temporary. So for the kids, it's hard to trust when you're always moving, always meeting new families, always things changing. So transition of how foster care moves causes the kids not to truly trust people. Number two, guided behavior to protect themselves from potential harm. So basically, uh, guided behavior, meaning you guide yourself because you don't know you've been hurt left and right. So you're not sure about the family or the people you're meeting for the very first time. So what you do, you guide yourself or you learn behaviors on how to always guide yourself. So I'll give you an example for myself. For me growing up, if someone was friendly, automatically I created guided behavior because getting close, that means you're about to hurt me. So to most kids, yes, they have learned guide, you know, guarded behavior because they are not sure to trust you. So, you know, it's things they just do to protect themselves. So that's number two. Uh, number three, witnessing unhealthy relationships. So witnessing unhealthy relationships will cause a child to really stay guarded. For example, if you see your parents, you know, have unhealthy relationships or you see your mom or dad, they have men and women that come in often, that creates a way that you learn to or not to trust anyone, you know, because uh, you see it often, you know, and that causes you to learn how not to get there. So for example, I give myself, I saw how, how much my mother was abused. And as a kid, that really upset me. And I was so little that I could not protect her. So that created a way of what I witnessed has made me not trust people that often, you know, because you witness it. So our kids witness bad behavior and, and also uh, unhealthy relationship between their parents and the people in their lives. And so that causes them or really make it so difficult for them to trust anyone. The other, the other reason is feeling unwanted. When you feel unwanted, it's really hard to really trust anyone, you know? Uh, most kids, when you've been unwanted by for example, your biological parents, it's hard to believe that another parent could accept you or could love you. You know, oh, when you've lost your mom and dad and they haven't really made an effort to get you back or haven't really tried anyhow, really, that makes you feel unwanted. And so it causes to trust anyone. I'll give you an example. Again, I use myself, you know, it was hard to trust that someone can be kind to me when my own, my own father could not be kind to me. You know, so in that way, we get to create ways on how not to trust people. When you feel unwanted, it's really hard to let someone in, you know? So most kids in force get, you've moved from one home, they didn't want you, you go to the next home, they do the same, the third home, the fourth home, it really causes you not to trust anybody. And remember, our kids in force get on average, they have moved more than five to seven homes in just one year or in a matter of two years. So tell me, how do you trust? Difficult in communication, some children may struggle to express their feelings, leading miscommunication, and mistrust. You know, my dad, again, I, I gotta use my own experience, you know, my dad's way of how he communicated to us or to my mom or to my siblings was always rude and harsh, you know? And so that caused us to always be allies. If someone is yelling, if someone is raising their voice, it's kind of like you, you go in the freeze mode. In other words, sometimes you block what you're hearing. And so you don't wanna hear it because these people are raising their voice and you're afraid of what is about to happen. And so that causes to miscommunication. So if you raise your voice and I already block my mind not to listen to you or afraid, everything you say is just go, gonna go over the other side, you know? And I've noticed some of our kids, when they've had challenges or have been really treated in, in, in some ways, it's difficult for them to trust anyone. Or sometimes they don't understand or they, or they don't hear you because they blocked you before you could start. Well, the other reason is frequent moves. So remember, most of our kids move from one end to the other. You know, as I say, some of them have moved in more than 12 homes before they turn 14 or 18. 
So constant move causes you to learn how not to trust anyone. Because the first family say the same things, the next family said, hey, we wanna adopt you. The third family say the same, the same, the same. And the pattern of movement really causes you to not trust anyone. Every time they move, they always think they're the problem, you know? So if you're always considered as a problem, you learn how to protect yourself. So that means every move, it's hard to trust the next family. The other is past trauma. You know, many, many foster children have experienced neglect, abuse, and abandonment, which can lead to deep-seated mistrust. So remember, when someone has said, I'll never touch you again, and they do it over and over, uh, or when you're verbally abused, and someone says, oh, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, and then they do it again, and again, and again, and again. So past trauma, causes kids to not trust. Begins from home, mom is on drugs, or mom is, you know, uh, mom has a, an abusive boyfriend, says, no, he won't come back. But then that guy comes back next week. Broken promises, well, well, broken promises. When someone says, hey, trust me, I'm gonna do this for you, but they don't do it. And then they don't do it. And then they don't. it triggers what happened to you in the past because you know the history of what has happened to you. So when someone frequent or says the same, yeah, it's hard to trust. To me, to most of the kids who are older than us as street kids, they will say, oh no, I fought with you yesterday, but I won't do it again. Well, but then they do it again, and they do it again. So for me, it was broken promises. To our foster kids, it's really difficult to trust anyone because of the broken promises. And we foster parents are the worst when it comes to that as well. We promise our kids this and that, but we end up not doing it, and that what it causes is mistrust. You know, I'm a foster dad. I get to hear phone calls from uh, the biological parents of my kids say, hey, I promise I'm doing everything I can to have you back. Well, that goes on one year and next year, and then third year, you can't go back home, you know? But they promised, and then they keep promising, and it doesn't happen, and that creates really mistrust. Disruption in early bonding, you know, so most kids were, didn't have that early bonding when they were little kids, and so that causes them to not trust anyone because the attachment issues really cause them to be close to anyone. Getting close to anyone, danger, danger, or they don't, they don't even know, and it's not the fault of their own, um, but somehow they have trained their brains like, hey, I cannot trust you because if I trust you, I'm in trouble, you know? So mistrust isn't just because they want to, uh, but it's attachment issue that they have learned how to survive on their own. So when they come to us, they already have the attachment issues. Fear of rejection, that's another one, you know? When you've been rejected over and over, it's hard to believe someone can love you. And our kids, have mastered on that. They've done it from the day they were born. If they have been in homes over and over, all their parents, you know, they come and go, they're in their lives and they're out, you know, and that really causes a uh, problem for kids to trust anyone. If I get close to you, I know you're gonna reject me. So why even bother, you know? For me as a street kid, yes, if someone wanted to befriend me who wasn't part of a street life, I could not trust them because I had seen how often they were mistreating us, but how often they treated us. So for me, for the fear of rejection, oh no, oh no, I could not go there. The man who took me in, Mr. James, fed me for one year and a half. Do you know why it took so long? Because for me, kindness meant danger. If someone was kind, it was dangerous. Because for everyone who was kind, showed us to most of us as street kids, that they were, because they will give you something, but he knew something was gonna follow, you know? So the fear of rejection caused us to not be close to anyone. And that's so common with kids in false care. They are afraid because they've been hurt. And most of them, when you've been hurt by your biological family, all close to you, it's hard to let someone even outside, especially for us as false friends, they're like, oh no, you're not different than others. You know, and so they don't really get to trust us or makes it harder for them to trust anybody. Unstable relationship. Constantly shifting relationship with adults and peers create an environment of uncertainty. You have your mom and then they move you, you go to your uncle and then they move you, go to your granny and then they move you. So there's constant move. That really unstable relationship, you know, because they're in and out causes our kids to not trust anyone. But also too, you know, you get to love people, you get to know them, and then you have to move. 
That means you have to change class, you have to change school, you have to change church, you have to change your community. You have to be, begin over and over and over. For me, I saw so many kids in, in as a street kid, they will come and go, but there were a lot of freaking of kids coming in. The next one came and you're like, hmm, I don't know how long you're gonna be here, so I don't think I should give in any effort to get to know you. The same as our false kids. You get to see your mom once a week or every other, I don't know, week. So it's not stable. And when you see them, you see them for just one hour and then they don't show up next week. And so the relationship is just on and out and ups and down. And that really creates our kids not to trust anybody. Inconsistent care can cause children to doubt the availability of those around them. There's inconsistent in loving or caring for you. You know, so in other words, it's just today they're in, tomorrow they're out. So even for us as false friends, you know, you're in today and then you have to go to respite and then you have to go back to here and then you have a social worker, you know, and then you have them this year and next year you have a new one and then you have therapists and then you have her or him this month and next month they no longer work at the same place. So the inconsistent care causes our kids to really find it hard to trust people. Negative experience with authority figures, you know? So negative interaction with adults, such as social workers or police, can reinforce mistrust. If the only way you know the policemen, it was the only time you met them when they were attacking your mom and dad, would you trust them next time? No. Well, if you're at school, the only time your principal or your teacher calls your parent is when you're in trouble. Do you trust them? No. Lack of control. Lack of control is the feeling powerless. Like for example, our kids get to be moved, but they never tell them or warn them like, do you have a say in this? No, they just come and say, sorry, you're gonna move. To where? I don't know. But you can't fight it. Or some of our kids who have been sexually abused by adults or members of their family, the people have done so much thing towards them that when those happen, they, they just really don't know how to trust anyone because they have no control. If I let you to love me, if I do and you come, I have no control. Somehow I lose my control in some way. That causes you to not trust. The other is separation of siblings. When you are a family of siblings and they are taking and take you away, you know, and they separate you. So now you're, you're, you're used to care for your siblings, but now they are not in your presence. That means you, you're afraid of what, what's happened to them. If you can take my siblings away and you cannot allow me to have a relationship with them or see them often, I don't know how I can trust you. 15 reasons why kids in false care might find it so hard to trust Frequent moves, past trauma, broken promises, attachment issues, fear of rejection, unstable relationship, inconsistent care, negative experience with people in authority or folly figures, lack of control, separation from siblings, difficult in communication, feeling unwanted, witnessing unhealthy relationship, guarded behavior, transitional nature of false care. That's all I have. Hope you enjoyed. I just wanted to share with you so I can tell you why our kids find it difficult to believe or trust anyone. Thank you for watching with us. It was a joy to truly share with you, but also educate you the hard things why most of our kids through false care or adaptive kids find it very difficult to trust others. So in the next episode, I'll share with you ways we can overcome that challenge, ways we can treat and be there for our kids to overcome the issue of trust or to help them get to learn to trust us, especially us, the parents or the adults. It's a process, but we can do it. I'm gonna show you your ways or things I've learned on how we can truly help our kids who find it hard to trust, learn how to trust. It's possible, I've seen it. Hi guys, my name is Anthony, this is my dad. <laughs> You're supposed to say hey. Oh. And this is my dad. Hey. All right. <laughs> it's so scratched. My dad. Hey. <laughs> I'm saying what you're saying. It's the way Just smile and wave. Okay, don't say anything. All right. This is my dad. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you can be notified whenever another one of our videos come out. And we love to see your comments. So make sure that you leave a comment down below of what we should do next and if we should bring back cooking with Anthony. And thank you so much for supporting us.